You know, it's funny. Just a few days ago, me and Dan, co-host of Broken Silicon, were discussing that it'd probably be a good idea to delay the recording of the latest Broken Silicon until after AMD's Data Center keynote. And, well, that's because Alder Lake had just come out, and I just had a really good feeling that in addition to MI200, AMD was about to reveal some other things, too, to remind people that they are going nowhere when it comes to being a market leader. In fact, while we were talking, it occurred to me, isn't Zen 3D going into production in quarter four? This is a data center keynote. They're almost certainly going to reveal Milan X. And guys, yeah, they did not disappoint. AMD revealed Milan X that will really be launched to preemptively strangle Sapphire Rapids in the crib. Sure, it will just bring a 10% increase in some apps, but in others, massive ones. This is launching before Sapphire Rapids and... This 64-core CPU with almost a gigabyte of cache honestly doesn't make 56-core Sapphire Rapids. What was supposed to be Intel's return to server look that good. Although, I'm sure Sapphire Rapids will have its niches where it dominates in some you know realms of performance. And I, I think we all need to keep putting things in perspective, too. 56-core Sapphire Rapids versus 64-core Milan X is a far better situation for Intel competitively than what was going on a couple of years ago where they had 28 core, 14 nanometer, just oven chips competing with 64 core Rome. Intel, look, Intel is making up for lost ground. Alder Lake is the start of Intel's comeback, but it's just the start. They've still got so much ground to make up, especially when you consider Milan X is just kind of a final cherry on top of Zen 3. AMD also announced today Genoa 96 core and Bergamo 128 core, first leaked by Moore's Law's dead, of course. It, I don't think 64 core Emerald Rapids, which is what the core count is as of now planned to be, is going to look that great. So I guess that's really what this video is about, putting things in perspective after AMD's keynote today. You know, Pat said that he wanted to be, you know, having question leadership around 2023 if they can with a leading node. And then he kind of changed it to 2024, 2025. He just wants to be a market leader by now. I just don't think there's any chance that Intel has unquestioned leadership, which when I hear the term unquestioned, I assume that means they're at least near number one in performance in all sectors they're competing in, including data center. I definitely don't see that happening until 2025 at the earliest. But I want to talk about that and what these recent releases mean for gaming hardware launches next year. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. It's almost 2022. It's not the early days of the internet anymore. Things have changed. You should have a VPN to prevent monitoring, protect your data, and enjoy streaming content that's arbitrarily locked from being watched depending on what region you're in. But also, a VPN can actually be so much more than that. Atlas VPN is currently running a large discount for three years of service with three months of free service for a special Black Friday deal to get not just a VPN, but a VPN that also does these additional services. Block ads and malware for you, including malicious links and ad trackers. They actively try to get you the lowest price a company offers, subverting some company's attempts to charge you more based on your location or operating system. And it works on unlimited devices. It only costs $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And all this is done, of course, without massively slowing down your internet. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount it means you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee and another three months free for Black Friday starting now if you click the link in the description. That's right. Black Friday shopping starts today if you click the link in the description. There's a special 80% off, 86% off, plus three months free offer for Moore's Law is Dead supporters. And, well, this is a limited time offer. It really does help the channel if you click on this link. Protect your data. Save yourself some money with Atlas VPN today. So like I said earlier in this video, Intel is back and they're going to do insane things, but don't make insane comments about AMD sitting still or chiplets being dead. Intel may be back, but chiplets certainly are not dead. And Alder Lake is a return to competition on consumer platforms, which is exciting. And Raptor Lake, which by the way, I want to be clear, will support DDR4. I tweeted that out and I want to be clear that, you know, 
DDR4 performs better than I think a lot of people expected with Alder Lake, and Raptor Lake will still support it. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of at least great mid-range DDR4, Alder Lake, and Raptor Lake systems for the next year. And I think Intel will be very competitive in laptops too, but... But that's the consumer side. I'm glad Intel's going to make sure AMD doesn't go entirely mad with power on the consumer products. But in server, Milan X drops into an existing socket and basically matches or beats Sapphire Rapids before it comes out. And then Bergamo and you know, is coming in and Executable Fix has leaked some pretty crazy details about Turin. I, I just don't see Intel really being seriously competitive in at least efficiency and per socket performance with AMD until Diamond Rapids, which is, again, I've leaked some details about what it could do, and I'm actually getting more now, but it's in 2025. AMD is just, I mean, come on, Milan X, uh, Bergamo, and Zen and Genoa, followed by Turin. It's just going to be at least three years of AMD dominating data center. And the unfortunate truth is that if AMD is dominating data center, then they're likely to be dominating HEDT just as badly, if not worse. So that's really the consumer side conclusions I pull from today's events when it comes to uh, their CPU side of things, right? I mean, look at what's going on here. They haven't launched Zen 3 on standard Threadripper. It seems like I was really hoping they might announce some special edition uh, Zen 3D Threadripper, which I still, maybe they could, but I just, I think it's unlikely. AMD is going to launch Threadrippers when they want to and when they need to, but they don't need to often because of Intel's basically horrible competition in that division. And I suppose on that same token then, even though I think Intel's going to be more competitive on desktop, if they can do 128 cores on Bergamo early 2023, I have to imagine that my suspicions they can launch a 32 core on AM5 are correct. And in fact, I've been talking to some sources since that Zen 4D, Zen 5 leak came out for me. And I can confirm that as of now, Raphael, the standard Zen 4 16 core uses 120 watts. But remember, from what I've leaked and what Executable Fix has leaked, there's a 170 watt CPU on AM5 above the 120 watt one. You know, I think that really could be a 32 core. The, the thing is, when I talked to some sources recently, it's not 100% that it is, but it's something special and that it's confirmed for sure AMD can do a 32 core Zen 4C on AM5 next year if they want to with Vcash, but they're not sure they need to. They actually think that 16 core Raphael may beat Raptor Lake, even in multi-threading on its own. So what's the point of just cannibalizing Threadripper that they're already just dominating in and therefore can demand massive profit margins on those next year? It's going to depend on how much Intel really pushes Raptor Lake and its price performance on if they release that. But that's my conclusions that I draw from this event, right? That AMD is going to dominate Epic for the next few years. And they wanted to make that clear to shareholders before Sapphire Rapids launched and after Alder Lake's revealed, you know, and launched going, no, no, no. Remember, we're still in charge. And because they're in charge in server, they're going to be in charge in Threadripper. And as long as they're in charge of Threadripper, I feel like AMD is unlikely to push top AM5 performance as hard as they could because that would cannibalize Threadripper. That, that, that's a thought and some details that I can give to you today after seeing AMD's reveal on the CPU side. But it wasn't just CPUs, was it? There was also a big data center GPU, or really accelerator should be called, you know, CDNA2. And I'm going to be honest, I don't have as much to say about CDNA2, and that's because, well, I don't follow the CDNA roadmap as much as I do the, of course, gaming hardware roadmaps, which I mostly focus on gaming hardware, but... Well, Epic shares chiplets with the gaming Ryzen chip, so I, I have to follow Epic. I don't have to follow CDNA. So while I won't have as much to say about it, I do want to say this, though. My God, MI250X looks impressive. It is a complete bloodbath raffle stomping of A100. And I guess what I would say then is this, right? This is the conclusion you should draw from the reveal of the first MCM, you know, or I guess first Infinity Fabric MCM GPU reveal, the MI250X. When AMD throws out top power consumption, people would be good to note this thing at the top uses 560 watts and goes for it and target a specific niche, they can clobber NVIDIA now, okay? What do you think that means for RDNA 3? Look, 
To be fair, the PCIe version, which of course desktop gaming RDNA 3 will use, is going to be more power constrained and have, you know, notably less performance in the very top model. You know, I think that's worth pointing out. But even then, when it's constrained in reasonable packages, you know, at a cheaper interface, it's still roughly doubled MI100 performance. People really should expect RDNA 3 to roughly double RDNA 2's performance. And like I've covered, RDNA 4 is going to be probably another 50 to 100% boost over that in late 2023. So, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is... AMD is now coming for NVIDIA, and now they're starting to use Jensen Wang levels of energy on some of their top chips. NVIDIA is going to need to watch out. If this is what they can do with CDNA 2 performance increases over CDNA 1, I don't see why they can't do this with some version of an RDNA 3 over RDNA 2. It's more complex, and it's harder to get gaming performance to scale as well over MCM as maybe CDNA can. So again, there's going to be some more performance hits than you'd see with uh, CDNA 2. Don't expect it to triple performance. I keep saying roughly double for now. But don't doubt roughly doubling is what I'm saying. So this is all very exciting, and I'll be covering all of it. But that is just going to about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, double check that you're subscribed to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel. It sometimes unsubs you and ring the bell button so you don't miss all of the upcoming content like the new Broken Silicon where we have so much to cover from the past two weeks of news. And remember that if you do support us on Patreon, you'll get that episode early and without ads and the ability to vote on new Die Shrink subjects and get the Die Shrink podcast that only patrons get also ad-free and also be able to ask me and guest questions. There's really so much content there for patrons who support us and we really do need the support if you want the... Uh, coverage to continue to increase in quality and quantity. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, that's going to do it. I should stop rambling. Thank you for watching. <laughs>